We're looking for the volume of this object that's described here. If we take the region bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 4 and revolve that around the line y equals 6, the result is a little bit hard to visualize, but you can pause here and try to see if you can observe that. It more or less looks like a donut with the inner face as a straight horizontal line like this instead of having a rounded inner edge, having a flat inner edge. To find this, we're going to think about slicing it across the direction of rotation. So if this thing is revolved this way, we're going to slice it across that axis. That's always the case. When you look at one of these objects that's rotationally symmetric, you think about which direction is it revolved, and then slice it across that direction. So it's revolved around a horizontal line, so we'll slice across that and make vertical slices. When we do, our slice and as long as you can do examples with washers, you can do examples with disks because those are simpler. So we need to find the inner radius and we need to find the outer radius. In both cases, remember that the radius is just the distance between the center of rotation and the edge. Now we're told that this is revolved around the line y equals 6, so the center is just y equals 6. Unlike in the last example where we were revolving around the x-axis, in that case we just had y equals 0. But it's the same principle here, we just have y equals 6. Then for the inner edge, for little r, the equation that describes that inner edge is y equals 4. Right, because the inner edge is the one that's closer to the center of rotation. So be careful with this, don't think in terms of upper function and lower function. Think of the one that's closer to the center of rotation and the one that's further away. So the inner edge is defined by the straight line here because that one's closer to this line of rotation, y equals 6. Watch out for that, that can trip you up if you're not careful. And then the outer edge is defined by this parabola y equals x squared. So the inner radius, little r, will just be 4 minus 6, or the difference between those two. Now if you notice, you get negative 2 if you subtract that way, or you can think of it as being positive 2, because we generally think of radius as being a positive value. If you think through this, though, it doesn't really matter if you use 2 or negative 2, because when we go to plug it into the formula, we're going to be squaring this, and when you square it, the negative sign drops off anyway, so you can subtract them in either order you prefer. It really doesn't matter. So even on the next one, for capital R, I could write x squared minus 6, or I could write 6 minus x squared, and either one would give me the correct answer in the end. So it doesn't much matter which way you write it. Once we have the values for the radius, that means that the area function is going to be pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared. So it may be helpful here to simplify this a little bit. We could write this as pi times x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 36 minus pi times 4. And then of course we can combine things the 36 minus 4 will give us 32. So that's our area function simplified a little bit. Then to integrate, to find the area, we need limits of integration. So that's the last piece that we have to figure out. So we'll come back to the picture for that. And what we're looking for is the x values at the outer limits of this object. 
In other words, we're looking for where y equals x squared intersects y equals four. This one you can probably just see that the answer is going to be two and negative two. But if you can't see that, you can set x squared equal to four and then solve just like you would any other quadratic equation. But in our case, the picture is clear enough. And there's the setup. Again, that's the hard part with these. Actually, integrating is very straightforward, very simple. I'll show a little bit of this, but I won't spend a lot of time on the integral because it's not all that interesting and it's not our focus at the moment. When you integrate, that's what you get with their bounds of integration. And then if you plug in these limits of integration and subtract, you should get 384 pi over five. So you can practice that if you like, but what I wanna focus on is the setup of this integral because that's where the challenge is and that's what the new material covers. So let's run through it one more time. We look at this picture. We have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. First of all, when we slice through this thing, which direction are we gonna slice? That determines whether our slices will have a thickness of delta x or delta y, which will determine whether we're gonna deal with x or y in our integral. Then we have to ask ourselves, is this gonna be a solid slice or is there gonna be a chunk missing out of the middle? Is it gonna be a disc or a washer? If it's a disc, that's a little easier because we only need one radius. If it's a washer, we have to worry about the inner radius and the outer radius. But once you figure that out and you have a good picture drawn with all the information you need, finding the two radius values in this case, we start by finding what's the line that defines the center, and then what curve describes the inner and outer edges, and then the radius values are both just the difference between the edge and the center. And then the rest of it follows from that. We find the area function, we set it up in the integral, and integrate to find the volume.